Hello and welcome to this short tutorial series on building a user login system using Python, Flask, and MongoDB. So before we get started, you should make sure that you have four things installed on your system. You need Python 3, pip, virtual env, and MongoDB. If you have all of those installed and running, then we are good to go. So in this first video, we are just going to cover installing Flask and then setting up some style sheets and two templates. So let's get into it. We have an empty project folder here. So the first thing we should do is create a virtual environment. So let's do that with a virtual ENV. We'll type virtual ENV, and then I'm going to type dash P to specify that I want to use Python 3, not Python 2. You might not have to do this if Python 3 is your default, but I have a few versions of Python, so I'll do that. And then the folder I want to create for the virtual environment is going to be ENV. You can call this anything you want, but this is pretty standard. So I'll hit enter. And now we have a virtual environment folder right here. So let's activate that virtual environment by typing source env slash bin slash activate, enter. And since we have the parentheses around env, that means we've activated the environment. So let's install Flask and two other requirements. We're going to use Flask, PyMongo, which will let us interface with MongoDB, and Passlib, which we'll use to encrypt and decrypt users' passwords. So we can install them by using pip. So I'll type pip install Flask, PyMongo, and then Passlib, and hit enter. Now that we have those installed, let's create our very first file. Create a new file called app.py. And let's just create a basic Flask app here. So we'll say from Flask, import Flask. And then let's create an app instance. So we'll say app equals Flask, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. And then let's create a route. So we'll say at app.route. And we'll just do a forward slash for the root URL of the app. And then we'll call this function home. And we'll just return some text. So in order to run this app, let's create a script file, which we can easily execute each time we want to start Flask. So create a new file here and just call it run. Don't give it an extension, just the word run. And here you want to type flask underscore app equals the name of our file. So app.py flask environment equals development. And then the commands flask run. So this is a new script file and we can run script files by typing dot slash the name of the file except that we haven't made this script executable yet. So let's do that by typing sudo chmod plus x to make it executable, and then the name of the file. Enter your password, and then let's try to execute that again, dot slash run. And there we go, we are running Flask. Let's check it out in the browser. There we go. There's our Flask app running in the browser. So let's close our terminal here for now. You can do that by typing control tilde if you're in Visual Studio Code. And we'll close this run file. So the next thing we should do is set up two templates, one for our home page and one for our dashboard page. So we can create a new folder here called templates. And in this, we'll create two files home.html and dashboard.html. And let's actually create one more file, which will be our base template. And you'll see why we want to do that in a moment. So let's create a new file called base.html. And let's use this file to create our HTML structure.
So I'm going to create a block here called content. You can call this anything you want, but let's just call it content for now. And this is where each template will be inserted into right here. So each template will automatically inherit all of this stuff and just the homepage template will be inserted here or the dashboard template will be inserted here. So we don't have to type this out for every new template. So let's make the homepage and dashboard template extend this template. So we'll go into home. We'll say that this template extends base.html and then we'll create that same block tag, block content. And let's just put a heading in here called home. And we'll do the same thing for the dashboard. I'm gonna call this one dashboard. All right, let's check this out in the browser. And nothing has changed because we haven't told the route to do anything except render the word home. So let's change that in app.py. So instead of rendering text, let's make it render a template. So we can use this function, render template, and we'll choose a template. We'll say the home.html template. And in order to use this function, we need to import it from Flask. So let's do that up here. So from Flask, we want to import Flask and then render template. Later on, we'll import several other things, but for now, this is all we need. So let's add one more route here for the dashboard and then we can test it. We'll make this dashboard, call the function dashboard, and make it render the dashboard.html file. Great, let's save this and check it out in the browser. Perfect, here's our homepage and we'll go to slash dashboard. And there we go, the dashboard template. One quick note here, on the route for the dashboard, I've added an extra slash at the end. If I don't do that, we can get to the dashboard with the slash, which is not an actual route, and we can get to dashboard. So there are two potential routes a user could end up on. If we add the trailing slash, if the user tries to go to dashboard with no slash, it will automatically redirect them. So there's only ever one route that users can try to access. So I like to add trailing slashes to all of my routes. So let's add some style sheets and script files to the base template. I've already created a style sheet for you to use so we can focus on the Python side of things. And that is at this GitHub repository, which is in the video description. But there are three files here, styles.css, normalize.css, which will make things look more uniform across all browsers, and then jQuery, which we'll use for our form submissions. So I've already downloaded these, so I will bring them into the project. The first thing I want to do actually is create a new folder called static for all of our static assets. And inside of this folder, let's create two more folders, one for JavaScript, so JS, and one for CSS. So I'll put these two CSS files into the CSS directory and jQuery into the JS directory. All right, now let's add these to the template. I'll link to the style sheets here. So static slash CSS slash normalize. And then one for styles.css. And we'll do the same for the script file here. static, JS, jQuery.js. We're actually going to have another JavaScript file. So let's just put one in here for that now called scripts.js. And let's create a blank file here in the JS folder for that. This is where we'll write our form submission code later on. All right, so let's save that and check it out in the browser. Cool. Our style sheet is in here and that works for both routes. So that's it for part one. Thanks for watching.